Hi everyone, welcome to the next edition of Dun & Bradstreet CA for Club. We are very privileged to have with us Mr. Mayank Khandalwal, CA for NEC India. Mayank, welcome to Dun & Bradstreet CA for Club. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's great to be today with you discussing a few recent developments and then uh, how things are spanning out as we go through this COVID-19. So very excited to be part of the discussion today. Sure. Mayank, uh, the first question I'll pose to you is, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, your journey from mm -hmm. a chartered accountant to becoming a CFO, because that will be very inspirational from, you know, a lot of young chartered accountant who are, you know, getting into the finance profession. Yeah, when I, actually, that's a very, very good question, right? Sometimes when I think about that, it, it definitely looks like a good journey, right? So, so having, uh, having started, uh, I will say, why don't I link with some of my background, right? So my family is a business family, right? So I've seen uh, from my childhood, right? What is the importance of being going granular, understanding numbers well, and then having uh, maybe a strategy and growth uh, execution around that, right? So kind of that's a little bit of the fundamental from where I have grown up. And then definitely as I, I was going through all of these, uh, CA, which profession definitely looked exciting to me, right? It gives me opportunity to, uh, contribute both from accounting and from business side, right? So it's the CA as a profession provides you that ability. And after doing CA, I will say it's it's all about uh, doing the right role at right time. That's how uh, things have kept happening for me. And the real, I will say, inflection point in my career was when I joined GE in 2010, right? And I think that's why when I feel uh, organization like GE plays a very important role in shaping your career, right? What do you want to do? How do you want to grow yourself? So those opportunities I kept getting as I kept progressing in the G. For example, I started with a very small p and of $2 million when, when I started GE. But as I kept growing and an organization uh, like GE keeps giving you more and more responsibility. They test you and as and when you deliver, against those uh, uh, challenges, navigation, some of the risk, the way you take, you get ability and chance to grow. So that's what happened. I started with a small p &L and then uh, the new opportunities came, kept coming in. And I was always open, right? So there are two uh, ways in which you can handle a particular challenge or opportunity. You can say no, or you can say, see, I will take this, but I also need this, this thing uh, as a help from you. So. I think that's always a discussion. I think what uh, every uh, finance professional, or I will say, any uh, professional who wants to go in the career is how how good are you to take new opportunities, take risk, and then have a plan around that. So that kept happening. I started with a, a finance manager, was then given responsibility of PNL uh, CFO role. After that, I became the controller for G Healthcare South Asia. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, after that, I also was put in an accelerator program, which is for experienced uh, finance professional who joined GE. And when people feel the management feel there's a growth potential, so it's called EFLP. It's a world renowned program. It used to be within GE and they used to select around 35, 40 people worldwide from GE. So I was put in that program and, and together with that. So it's like you are in that program and you also do your job. So it's an on job. Uh, again, like an experienced finance uh, leadership program. I was put in that, got exposure of, of how things work globally, was able to do projects, a lot of trainings in class, outside class uh, was provided. I also got chance to, again, work with a lot of talents globally, attend some of the very good uh, sessions, whether it's Harvard or Crotonville, uh, which is a great training institute within GE. Right, so that was happening and then as I said, I, I, I kept taking new and different roles, bigger roles. So after controllership, I was offered the, the financial planning and analysis fp &A leader in GE. Right, so that happened and then I also graduated for my program, which is EFLP and then I was asked to go global. Right, so kind of just laying down a little bit about my journey and the thing I wanted to bring about that is just be open for the risk, right? Don't, don't let the opportunity go. Take those and then have a plan in place uh, with a clear vision and focus to what do you want to deliver. So I think that's the thing which has helped me as I grew in my career. And then definitely uh, I, I, I played some global roles within GE. I was the CFO for uh, one of their division uh, with external uh, 5 billion revenue, the supply chain CFO for that. So got again opportunity to work with uh, different teams across the globe, different factories, understanding how they work, how they function. So 
So I will say again, uh, it's been a good journey. The some of the basics will still remain same. You need to understand the granular stuff. You need to understand your business well. You need to go and make your hands dirty. Without that, it's very difficult to really understand what's going on operationally, and then you cannot link have a link between finance and operations. So I think that that will be my advice to the new people who are entering into the profession. Right, you will have multiple choices. First, you have to make a choice within within a particular uh, 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 stream. What do you want to do in finance? You have got many options, right? So you decide it and then keep uh, going in that direction by taking additional risk. Uh, be clear on your vision, and that's how you progress. I I hear you that you know. I mean, I hear that how important G was in your career journey. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think the role a corporate plays? You know, while building a building mm-hmm. a career for a finance profession yeah no i think oh, yeah. very it's a, yeah it's a i think very very important question right and, and now when i am in a position I, I i lead the teams i am in a management position right i i get to understand how important it is right if my manager would not have invested me in those days right and they would not have uh, given me growth path opportunity to learn training and all those things right so i would not have been in that position so to answer your question it's very very important right for personal and professional development to really understand for each individual what's their development need what's their uh, growth path provide them the visibility with clear objective that, that okay this is what you need to do and this is how some of the things which is including training mentoring coaching will help you so organization which has got very robust internal system to promote their people to provide them growth path to provide them ability to get trained coach mentor i think you will see lot of uh, leadership uh roles coming out of that again example are like companies like NEC where you will see people sticking to 15 years 20 years 25 time year time frame that's all because organ- these organization these big companies provide that uh, opportunity uh for people to grow internally and and do better jobs so it's very very important in in today's scenario uh nana uh my aunt, you have worked in the US i mean mm-hmm. CG was in US MNC you worked in India and you also working right now with a japanese mnc right so right. what is the you know how you would you say you know how different the culture is from this countries i mean how has been your experience yeah so again uh, working globally the best thing which you learn is uh, understand how different uh, uh, motivation factor will be for different people across the globe right so some of the basics still remain same nana right like those people definitely want to be connected they want to get motivated uh, they need appreciation they need inputs on time but again the style of working when you look at from global perspective every country will have a different way of style right so a, a person how he gets motivated what are his driving factors things which uh, makes him run faster those will be very different so being in a global role gives you that perspective right uh, again as i said it's all it's all driven by your culture some of the local setups correct so keeping those in mind it helped me to understand what motivates uh, how a people can be uh, driven how do you uh, uh, kind of provide him the growth path the visibility and all those so the, i think once you are into global positions and see different parts uh, different cultures different countries you start appreciating that a lot you create that empathy for the teams what they do and uh, also some of your working style changes right i mean again when i was in india I had a little bit of push kind of uh, attitude where you will get then things with with push there's a little bit of culture in india where they definitely respect your seniors right in in when you go into global companies global places us europe i think it's more about how can you influence those guys it's not only about push right it's the leadership then comes is how do you make them realize their growth path is associated and linked with the organization and and understanding what uh, a true leadership is versus just getting and giving an order it's all about motivating influencing so i think those things you you learn and lot and those becomes very very critical so um you know since we are in that global company framework i want also wanted to understand you know as a finance professional as a cfo do you see a different um, you know kind of risk taking abilities or a uh, risk uh, you know outlook towards risk uh, changes when you move from country to country um see it does because uh, that's what you also learn right how do you start delegating your teams right and when you start delegating your teams they will like to take some of the risk right so you will not hold all 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 your decisions and that's how you develop your team that's how you make them grow right so 
I see little bit of difference in in the way uh, I think different uh, countries I will say and different region approaches it but it it definitely helped me in terms of making my team take more risk giving them more delegation and making them accountable and responsible also so I see uh, it also I will again I will say it's not in really India or US it's it's more the style of uh, how how good leader you are and what's your style Correct. So you definitely get to absorb that a lot when you're outside India because people are given a task and you don't have to micromanage them. They do independently. You give them the risk. The atmosphere is like that, right? The the, the atmosphere created in some of these aspects will enable you to take those risks. So I will say yes, but I will also say then it all comes to individual uh, leadership style also, how, how you want to operate. Correct. So um, my own, and in your present uh, company, you work closely with a lot of across government sectors right as well as with businesses what are the some of the key trends that you're hearing that you know it's likely to be the most most focus in 2021 yeah so uh, see uh, the time could have not been better uh, then we even become discussing NEC which is a global conglomerate and deals with all technology and and different areas right where technology can add value if you look at the slogan which NEC has, right? Orchestrating the better tomorrow, right? So that's what we are here for. And and that's when we see when we are in India, we can add a lot of value working with government, co-creating the new stuff, the whole expansion of digital journey, which government has started, whether you say is the safer cities, the smart cities, right? The whole uh, uh, citizenship, the governance aspect of digital uh, governance, right? So. NEC is actually have executed a lot of good projects with government, partnership with government, whether you name it the whole uh, submarine project around the laying down the underwater sea cable and providing that bandwidth capacity linking India to uh, Andamans. Uh, all all uh, the project was end to end driven by NEC. So you take that, the, the number of smart cities right now we are working on, the whole technology around facial recognition, how how we are working on 5G. So I think these are some of the important areas and government is our key customers right now. A few of the learnings when you are dealing with government, I think, and again, I, I have I had experience in NEC and I had experience when I was with GE, right? Uh, working with government can be very rewarding and very challenging. Let me be very honest, right? Until, until you are not strong in your processes, your framework, your documentation, you will always see a pain, right? And, and if you have those things set very well, and you follow those, you are clear on your deliverables, documentation and, and the process, I think you then start enjoying working with government. And we within NEC also see when we have different views operating in a different way and connecting with government, uh, some views do a pretty good job and some view we see there is some challenges, right? And that's where our effort is that how do we streamline these processes, create a framework when we, are, when we are discussing with government, when we are creating new opportunities with them, so that we can bring out the right value of NEC. So I think uh, very we, we are very excited and we are, as I said, doing multiple projects with government. They are going very well, creating a lot of value. And that's what we, we are thinking with COVID, those things are going to expand very fast. And that's when we feel NEC as a global leader and in some of these ICT technologies will play a very critical role partnering with the government. So, you know, I, as you said, that you know, the governance and uh, the structure, everything has to be placed, uh, you know, while you're working with the government. So as a CFO, mm -hmm. in terms of the governance part, you know, what are the major things that you play? I mean, you know, how do you think a CFO can play a, play a part in the data governance and in the entire governance and corporate governance section? So I think uh, 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 as a CFO, I think, and CFO is in the much better position, right? To understand all the risk from organization perspective, right? Definitely. Partnering with the business is one aspect, but also mitigating some of these risks and setting up the system and processes are very critical. But for that, you need to really understand, have a very close working relationship with each of the business units, the operating units, the functions, I will say IT, uh, HR, supply chain. So as a CFO, you then get a complete link and you can help to set up those processes. Digitization is very important thing. Simplification is very important aspect, but, but being, uh, first able to appraise the risk and then trying to put those systems which will mitigate the risk. I think that's a major uh, role of CFO can play in these sub situations where data governance is very important, whether data integrity is very important, where putting the processes like an understanding if you're signing a contract or if you're getting into a, a 
partnership model what are you signing for right and and are you risk covered are you, is your partner risk covered so those things uh, if you have a system as a finance professional as a cfo if you put those control checks and balances in place it helps the overall of an organization right right so what are the kind of you know do you use external tools for your risk management or you know you guys develop something on your own uh, what kind of you know what kind of tools or usage that you do to and you know manage your data governance piece it's a it's a um, then it's a combination of both internal and external tools we do have external tools where we think they are more effective and can be utilized and when and being a it company and a company which creates a lot of new ips we also create our own right so it's a combination uh, approach which we use we the, the whole approach is we go for the best whatever is the best available if we can do it in house we will do it uh, if we have outside we will do it what is important is creating that framework right and that's what we definitely do it well to ensure that we have those framework in place where all the systems can work together tie and those rigor uh, from tracking those risk ensuring uh, the compliance is not getting uh, uh, overdue all those things so we we put a lot of focus on that right i will come down um, you know come back to the pandemic situation in 2020 and you had a lot of life projects going on in the infrastructure with government so how did you manage you know to you know to manage all of those and you know manage the timeline of delivery so how has been the you know entire uh, managing the situation in 2020 was i think 2020 and the whole covid atmosphere right i will say it was a challenge but it was also a boom right because then that's how you understood what can be the different way in which you can manage your business your deliverables your customer expectation right so it's not always necessary that you have to be in front of your customer technology is going to be a very big role and that's what we are trying to do right so if you look at a lot of uh, areas we play in those things are actually helping not only us but but as a business but also a lot of the other businesses to operate business more independently don't be it should not be a person dependent process but it should be more a or a, a person dependent uh, deliverable but should be more a system process driven things right so that's how we have adapted right we had created our bcp plan which was backed with all the clear understanding of how a b and c will work if this happens this will be our our game plan if it doesn't happen so that's how we as a for team first came together understood what are the areas what are the challenges we will have creating a plan for that and and in all of these if you see the whole framework customer uh, was the first uh, right that the the whole approach of customer first and understanding what customer need is that's how we have been able to navigate it. again we it's, it's just to give you an example of our project in uh, uh and the mans right the canny project which we have executed it was all executed do during uh, the covid team uh, covid period right and it was one of the most successful projects um, uh, uh, prime minister mr narendra modi has inaugurated that and he actually has appreciated the project so that's an example right that even if the covid is there if you plan it well you use digitization tools you use delegation you use the right framework you still can deliver all the things which is expected from you right so those are some of the learnings i will say from from this whole covid scenario first is think about digitization investing is in in your technology will be very critical for the organizations we have done it we are continuously expanding the way we are working even if i'm saying uh, initial one two months were hiccups then uh, but after that once we understood how do we model this whole framework i think now people are very comfortable whether you are at home whether you are in office it actually doesn't matter a lot it, it it's all about uh, the way we have planned it and put the systems in place correct correct it, it is definitely a year of for year of learnings for all of us yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. so much of learning just wanted to understand would you like to give some quick tips you know to the finance professional on how to improve financial and operation performance uh, of an organization especially yeah. you know keeping uh, with 19 and 2020 as a year in the background yeah so uh, for sure and and again everybody has got his own learning as i said right when we navigated through the period learning from uh, uh nec's perspective i will say is uh, keep keep reviewing your uh tools systems processes and have a plan in place right because there's no right time to invest in these things correct and you never know that when will this be used but but think little ahead and be little ahead in the game right and be ready 
uh, for some of these challenges which which can come in, in in as you go in future so that's why i was telling before also the whole business continuity plan becomes very important right because in some scenarios you may think nothing will happen nobody would have predicted covid will come right a year back and there will be so much deception and a new things which will come up but that's how this things has taught us so my uh, advice uh, to the professionals whether in finance or from operation side is just just keep investing in new technology just be ready for new stuff and uh, the the most important thing covid has uh, uh teached us is there's nothing permanent right there's no the restriction or there's no constraint that this thing can be only done in one way so just be open for taking new ideas new opportunities and the early you adopt those and and again i'm reemphasizing the digital technologies the the new uh, age uh, technologies the the new areas the better it will be for you and the business right you will be more equipped you will be little ahead in in game in terms of adapting those and which has got its own productivity benefits which you get from uh, have like people can avoid traveling so there's a lot of savings around that which they become very productive right so the advice will be just be ready for the new technology uh, i i will say uh, have a courage to be the first don't just wait at the last and have some of the business continuity plan in place because those are a uh, need of the hour and you don't know when will you have to use them so in 2021 what are the learnings that you had in 2020 that you want to take ahead with you and if there's any regret or anything that you don't want to repeat in 2021 that you have learned in 2020 uh so again uh, from from my personal learning perspective is uh, i will say 2021 has taught me how do you uh, become more humble more agile correct some and in some cases we have the experiences where we have not shown these we have uh, burned our hands correct so so always remaining agile correct ha- just just uh, have a plan in place and again having two options plan a and plan b is always good because if you're dependent only on one plan and if it doesn't work out then it will be a problem so the message i'm giving is in in you're looking from the business perspective also don't put all your eggs in one basket keep diversifying your business segments as much as you can like for any see if you know we we play in multiple different segments and i was giving example we play in smart cities we have in transportation we we also have got solutions in logistics telecom so these the way we have navigated through this is we we have invested during this covid time also right a lot on keep building the new products keep building the new technology keep investing in the people right and that's how uh, we have been able to come through and the learning again is when you don't do that uh, you will see some of the challenges what we have seen as the covid has approached us Thank you so much man it was really an insightful uh, you know interaction i'm sure our viewers will you know benefit a lot from this all the best to you and once again a very very i mean thank you thanks a lot man i think very good connecting with you and uh, hope uh, you have good rest of your day thank you thank you